Having some sort of informed criticism of the police doesn't mean you're anti-cop. We're far from anti-cop. It's our news, on the contrary. But just saying the police are wonderful, are wonderful, are wonderful when they're not doing their job, that's not being supportive of the police. That's just, that's just being bovine. Now, the RCMP, there are some questions about them. It's a breaking story just today. We're not sure of the details, but the, the, the allegation, at least, is that someone had $400 stolen. They were, they were helping someone who, who apparently had lost some of their, their home in the flooding. $400 was stolen. They went to the police. The police said, we're too busy. I'm not, not going to help you. And then these people tried to actually arrest the person who had taken the money. And the cops said, if you do that, we'll arrest you. We'll charge you with a crime. And Lon Gunter joins us from Edmonton. Lon, the RCMP, I mean, the, the word iconic is overused. But if, if anything is iconic in Canada, surely it's the, it's the RCMP. There are a lot of questions these days though, about their reputation. Absolutely. And, and deservedly so. I mean, they're, they're a fine... Uh, police force, they have a great uh, legacy, a great heritage, great reputation. But uh, I think that over the last, probably the last 30 years, there have been an awful lot of forces pulling on the RCMP uh, that, that have caused them to, to lose their connection with ordinary Canadians. And, and I think that when the police force see themselves as separate from the population, uh, that's always a danger. I mean, Bobby Peel, Robert Peel, the, the man for whom London's iconic Bobbies are named, uh, he, he had nine principles for police forces, and one of them was that they had to be of the people that they were policing. And I think that uh, all too often, unfortunately, these days, the RCMP see the ordinary member of the public, especially people who own guns, as as much of a threat to public safety as drug dealers and other thugs. My God. By the way, you always know when someone isn't from Britain because they refer to the, the British police as bobbies. I've never heard of Brit, not since those movies of the 1950s. I say, get a bobby now. Is the that the... The Metropolitan Police. The, the, well, yeah, the, there are other words for them, too, but I, I can't say them on, on national <laughs> TV. Now, is that any different, though, from the police in Germany? Because I, I think your analysis is spot on. I, I think too many police, it's always been there to a degree, but the assumption that ordinary citizens are, are a threat or a potential crime rather than someone to be helped. But are the RCMP any different from any other police, whether it's metro or, or provincial in this country in that way? I, yes and no. I mean, I I think they are, and I, I think the one distinguishing, well, there's probably two things. I did a series of, of pieces last week for the Sun Papers, and two things that, that jumped out at me from all of my interviews with current and former Mounties and with people who studied the, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, two things. In the 1980s, there was an, a, a, a realignment, a reorganization of, of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and they became part of the civil service. They were prior to that, basically an independent paramilitary police force. Uh, after the mid-1980s, they became part of the civil service. The commissioner became a deputy minister under the solicitor general and then eventually under the public safety minister. And all of their hiring and firing practices had to conform to the civil service. So you have a, a real problem where when you have a bad apple in the mountains, as you, when you have a bad apple at, you know, Heritage Canada, it's very difficult to discipline that person and even more difficult to fire them. Well, that's fine if you're just talking about the under assistant deputy acting director of Aboriginal curation uh, in Heritage Canada. It's another matter when you have somebody who has a badge and a gun and, and the uh, legal authority to go around exercising both of those. So, so making the Mounties part of the, the regular civil service was a problem. Problem. And the second thing has been the fact that the Mounties have become the federal gun cops. They've become Ottawa's yeah. enforcers for Bill C-68. And because Bill C-68 sees ordinary hunters and sports shooters and farmers and ranchers as, as, as much of a threat to the public order as you know, a, any gang member is, uh, the RCMP and the gun-owning public, uh, of whom there are at least four million in Canada, um, they become opposite sides, uh, the opposing sides. And so that's been a huge problem in the RCMP's credibility, and, and that was seen, obviously, in High River. Well, it was, and we've got to take some credit here, because I think if Sun News hadn't really pushed on this story, it wouldn't have been exposed. And again, it's not trying to, uh, to, to attack the police here, but we know that RCMP officers went into people's homes. Now, they have a right to break in if they think somebody could be in trouble. But I've said this before, we didn't see too much medical equipment in, in the dinghies. So if someone was lying there in trouble, what would they have done? 
But we also, we have, we have and it's anecdotal at this stage, but that they, they went straight to locked cabinets. There was no one who locked in a cabinet. They broke open cabinets. They were not fools. They were searching for guns. And if there's now a disconnect between the RCMP and law-abiding gun-owning Albertans, then we're in real trouble. Yeah, and I think we are in real trouble. I, I hope that uh, Commissioner Bob Paulson's uh, request to the the uh, Civilian Complaints Commission for the RCMP uh, bears some fruit. It'll take a while. It's going to take a few months for the CPC, the Civilian Complaints, Com- the Complaints Commission of the, of the uh, RCMP, to look into whether or not Mounties uh, overstepped their authority. Uh, I think that we'll find that they did overstep their authority. Yeah. And, that, and the reason is that the mentality is such now that even at the uh, the regional level, the southern Alberta level, where you are supposed to have officers who, who know the region, they know the individual communities and the kinds of people who live there. Even with that, they still don't trust civilians with guns. And, and that's an unfortunate thing because it shows there's a real detachment that the police think that they are somehow separate yep. from the citizenry. You know, I mean, the, the, the staff sergeant who used to be in charge of the detachment where my grandparents lived went hunting with my grandfather. Exactly. Exactly. You know? It was this sense of applied empathy, if you like. The, you assumed that the cop was there, he knew you, he knew about your family, particularly the RCMP. The RCMP were often lo- locals. And if we have lost that, I, I'm hoping we've misplaced it, but if we've lost it, then the next five years, and particularly if there is a different government in Ottawa, could be, could be so, uh, so troubling. Thank you, as always. A great pleasure. Well done. You bet, Michael.